All right, what's going on guys? So in today's video, I'm gonna show you how I took my dad's sleepy 12 foot John boat. And turn it into this. Twelve months ago, I sold my Mako Pro Skiff. And the day that thing left the driveway, I immediately regretted it. You guys, that was the boat that I learned how to inshore fish all over South Carolina and coastal Georgia. I learned how to target every inshore species a variety of different ways. And it was honestly the boat that allowed me to kickstart my YouTube channel. And just like anything else I do in life, I hit plateaus. And when I do, you guys, I look to see what that next level is going to be. Now me as an angler, that next level is to step into a larger boat that will allow me more capabilities. It will allow me to go further, attract and target different fish species. Other species, honestly, that the Mako Pro Skiff would never have a chance seeing. And I got a chance to do that with the help of the Sea Hunt. That 22 foot bay boat has been an absolute gem. It is still gonna be in my arsenal and it's not gonna go anywhere. I've got the opportunity to experience some new style of fishing and I have learned an absolute pile, but it's time to go back to my roots and to start targeting fish shallow again. So throughout this project, I set three specific goals. One, it had to be cheap. Two, it had to stay lightweight. And three, everything had to be saltwater capable. Now, as far as the cheap part goes, I already got that covered. I borrowed the boat from my dad. I procured a lot of accessories from my friends. And I think overall, I'm about $200 out of pocket for everything else that I did to the boat. The second part, keeping it lightweight. That is honestly the name of the game. This is a shallow water skiff. Every time you add weight to a boat, it sits heavier in the water and I want it to stay shallow. Not to mention, I want it to stay lightweight just in case I need to get out and drag this thing around maybe pull it up and over a sandbar. I want the capabilities of doing that. And the third and final thing is this boat needs to be saltwater ready, which means I need to be able to take it out in the saltwater conditions. And when I'm done, hose it off, spray it off, and not have everything rust out from underneath me. So now we're gonna step into the build. I'm gonna show you guys everything that I've done to this boat from start to finish. I did a lot of filming on it. A lot of it is gonna be time-lapse with a little voiceover, but I'm gonna walk you through the entire process of how I took that boat from just plain simple into exactly what she is today. All right, so first things first, let's talk about the hatch that I dropped into this thing. Now, I knew I needed a storage solution for this boat because there's really nowhere to put things in a John boat. You're just basically setting things all around the deck. And I didn't want that. I don't want to trip on this boat. It's only 32 inches wide, so it's not the stablest boat to start with. So having things in particular spots is key to me. So when I looked at where the storage compartment or the storage options could be, I really only had two choices. I had to either cut an access hatch and put it in the rear seat or in that middle seat. And I decided to honestly go with the middle seat. The middle seat is the smaller of the two uh, benches, but I want that large bench seat to stay intact because it does have a giant piece of foam. And in the event that I do flip this thing over, I want it to be able to float and not sink to the bottom of the river. So when it came time to outsource a hatch, I went straight to amazon.com because I knew they were gonna have the largest and cheapest selection. Now I'm not looking for top quality products on this. I just wanted something that would fit the bill. So for 59 bucks, I found the hatch that matched up perfectly for that bench. I took the inside and outside dimensions and compared it to the actual bench itself. And this was the one I was going to get. Not to mention it was shipped to me in two days. So once I got that thing, I took it out of the package. I set it up there on the bench like you're seeing here. And I just kind of centered it up. I took a couple measurements and then I pulled out my carpenter's pencil and just made a circle all the way around. And that would show me exactly where I need to make my cut. So I would be able to insert this thing into that aluminum sheet metal. Now, when it came time to cut the hole out, I had two tools in mind. One, I was going to use my Dremel with my metal cutting disc. And the second tool was just going to be my six inch angle grinder. Now, I initially started off with that Dremel just to get a nice precision cut all the way around. Then once I had that line made, I was going to come in with my big heavy uh, angle grinder and really just get the job done quick at that point. So once the cut was made, I just took a flat blade screwdriver. I popped the, uh, the cut out out and that revealed the giant piece of foam that is down in that bench seat. Now, this piece of foam is big, you guys. It's about 10 by 10 and it's every bit of 29 inches wide. And uh, there's only one way to get this thing out, and that is to just take a chisel, 
start cutting and gouging this thing out and get it out piece by piece. Now there's really no pretty way to do it. I tried to attack it a couple different types of ways, but really when it came down to it, I just had to get nasty with this thing. And also I had to keep that vacuum cleaner by my side. That vacuum cleaner kept uh, foam from spreading all over the neighborhood and it really helped keep the job nice, clean, and tidy. So once I got all that foam out of there, I went ahead and dropped the hatch in just to dry fit it and make sure that everything looked good before I start screwing and bolting anything down to the uh, actual aluminum seat itself. And everything looked good. My measurements were, uh, were, were right on and I couldn't be happier at this point. So uh, we reached the end of the day. I started running out of filmable light. So I went ahead and concluded everything for today's portion and was excited with the progress that we have going so far. All right, so the next project on the skiff was to get a decking material down. So I knew I had wanted to do some sort of sea deck type material, but I don't want to pay for the expensive stuff. So I went right back to amazon.com again, and I found this product that it's 94 and a half by 35 ish and a half wide, which is perfect because the bottom of this boat is 32 inches wide because it is a 1232 and having that 35 inch uh, width on this roll of sea deck would be perfect. It would give me a little bit of extra room for play. And it came in, a, honestly, a bunch of variety of different colors and color schemes, but I wanted to stick with that, kind of that camo, that, uh, that green looking color, just to stay with the theme. So for $75.99, I grabbed two of these things and I was ready to go to the next step. So when this stuff comes shipped to your door, it comes in a giant roll. So it's got a lot of memory to it. So the first thing you're gonna wanna do is lay it out on the hot concrete uh, pad and just kind of put some weight like I did with these bricks on the side and allow that sun to really heat up the glue and heat up that EVA foam. And that will allow it to flatten out and kind of get rid of that memory. If you tried to stick it onto the boat with the memory that it had, it would probably peel up on you and it would obviously make it very difficult during the measuring process because nothing's wanting to lay flat. So after that thing sitting in the sun for about two hours, it flattened out great, which was perfect. It allowed me to get in there and make my measurements, draw my lines, get my sharp crafting scissors out and make really, really nice clean cuts. Now, the next step that you guys need to make sure you do at this point is wipe down the surface. I used isopropyl alcohol, basically the same alcohol you guys would use to uh, clean your skin or whatnot, and give the surface a really nice wipe. And then at that point, just let it dry for about 30 seconds to a minute and then this stuff is ready to stick down. Now, just be mindful. You only get one shot, one opportunity at uh, applying this thing down. So make sure you're getting it set exactly the way you want before you start sticking this thing to the metal. So in this clip, you guys are seeing me stick down the uh, adhesive to the metal bench seat. And I wanted to show you this clip because I went a little bit of an easier route as opposed to just trying to measure out exactly where that cutout was in this piece of EVA foam. I just stuck the whole thing down and then went back afterwards with a uh, sharp knife and just cut out the hole, basically following the same line that I did with my uh, cutout wheel and the day before. And uh, it made it the process a lot easier this way. So once I had all that EVA foam down on all of the uh, touch surfaces of the boat, I went ahead and I installed the push pin. Now I didn't get a shot of this, but I pre-drilled the holes ahead of time. And now what you're seeing is I'm just kind of coming over with that mounting bracket. And I'm just uh, basically poking around, trying to find where my holes were. Once identified where they were, I come in with a couple stainless steel screws screwed everything down into place and then that takes care of my push pin mounting brackets. Now the push pin is extremely important for me in the style of fishing that I want to do. It's going to act as a, honestly a push pole on the flats as well as just a quick and quiet silent anchoring system that you guys have seen me use in the Mako Pro Skiff last year. All right now it's time to tackle the floor system on this boat. So I knew I wanted to keep everything nice and light and I had an idea on the materials I wanted to use. So I made my way over to Home Depot and went straight to their insulation section. I knew there was a product called R5 that was basically a super lightweight, hard dense foam that did uh, kind of wick moisture because that's pretty much what they use it for in homes and in that type of application. So I kind of looked through until I found the one inch thick pieces because that's honestly how thick the ribs were on the bottom of the John boat. And I picked up a four by eight sheet of that stuff. Next, I needed some sort of material to sit on top of that hard R5 dense foam. So I just kind of walked through the aisles until I found a product that made sense to me. And it's this wallboard style material. It's a very thin plastic PVC material. And uh, I actually laid everything out on the ground, stood on it, and it felt pretty firm to me. 
So I knew that would work for the project. I grabbed a can of liquid nails as I passed by and I checked out, head back to the house, and this is where we start, honestly, the hardest part of this project. All right, so once I got back to the house, I just started doing some basic measurements on how big and how wide these pieces needed to go in between the ribs. So once I got my measurements down, I basically took a box cutter, I made some very simple cuts, was able to uh, kind of break it off because of the type of material that this was. And then I just started laying these things in, one, two, three, four, and that was a really easy job. All right, so I got all four of them in, one, two, three, four. They turned out really nicely. Uh, these are all pretty much equal rectangular in shape, one, two, three. This one here, uh, as the, you get towards the uh, front of the boat, it kind of pinches in a little bit, so I had to wind up cutting an inch here and an inch there. Also, up here in the front of the boat, there's a little bit of a, a, a slope or maybe a curve to the, uh, to the front. So what I did is I just kind of notched it just like that. I didn't break it all the way through, but I did notch it. So when I lay it in here like this, it'll, uh, it'll have a nice little uh, natural bend to it here. And then when I put the floor on, obviously I'll probably have to do some extra adhesive or uh, something to, uh, to kind of make up for that little bend. But this, uh, this should provide a nice little subfloor. It's actually pretty hard. Very, very uh, thick, dense foam. Uh, I know it's not gonna be as hard as a normal flat floor, but you know what? It's gonna be a nice flat surface for me to walk around on. And uh, we'll go from there. If I gotta make modifications as time goes on, then so be it. But for right now, this makes the most sense to me. So the next step was just to cut the wallboard that's gonna sit on top of that R5 foam. Very simple process, just measured everything out, made some very simple cuts with my battery operated skill saw and started laying it in. Now the back portion was very fairly straightforward. It was honestly just kind of squared off. The portion towards the front of the boat was slightly different because the boat does have a little bit of a point to it. So I had to do a little bit of uh, old school longhand math to figure out exactly what my decimal point was going to be. And that uh, was just honestly interesting to see that uh, this is actually a skill set that I retained from elementary school. And the last and final thing was just to get the liquid nails put down on top of that R5 board and then rest that wallboard on top of it. I grabbed a few bricks I had laying around on the side of the house, put a towel down first to protect that sea deck and just put the bricks on top just to add a little bit of pressure so it helps adhere a little bit quicker than normal. All right, so the next on the punch list was to mount the grab rail. So I just piloted a couple holes and then grabbed the larger drill bit, drilled those out to allow for the large stainless steel bolts to uh, kind of through bolt. Then I put the back and plate behind it, measured everything out, pre-drilled it, that way it would honestly just uh, be a one fail swoop as far as just kind of putting a bolt all the way in. And I didn't really have to take multiple steps and drilling things in different stages. I just laid it all out and kind of did it all at once. So last thing to do was just to get everything lined up, slide those large bolts in. Occasionally you had to give them a little tap for encouragement and then it just simply bolted in on the backside and man, that's it. This thing is rock solid. And the final thing to wrap up the day was just to install the hatch to just basically set it in place, pre-drilled all my holes, and then took that stainless steel hardware, screwed everything in, and we were done for the day. All right, so at this point, we're just working through our punch list of a few final items. Uh, one of those being cleats. The boat needed cleats on all four corners. Now in the back, it was very simple to install. Just got these cleats again from amazon.com. They came with stainless steel hardware, so I just pre-drilled the hole, set them in place, and bolted them in through the back. Now, when it comes to mounting the cleats to the very front, I didn't want to use that front uh, horizontal piece. I wanted to kind of keep the cleats uh, linear uh, in line like the, the rear ones are. So in order to do that, I had to take just a hammer and just kind of uh, tap the area where the uh, tubular area is kind of rounded and just flatten that out so to get a nice flat surface to mount on. And then same kind of process, just uh, shoot a couple holes and then come right behind that with some stainless steel screws that I got from the hardware store and that was it for the cleats. Now, one of the things I did identify is that this boat does need a bilge system. If I get called out in the rain, I got nowhere for this water to go unless I have a small hand pump. So I just went up to River Supply, picked up a small little bilge pump. I had to make the little aluminum bracket that holds it in place, uh, but that was very simple with uh, just a couple screws. I was able to fasten that to the back of that bench seat. I ran my wires up the side of the boat to a very simple little waterproof toggle switch mounted that to the boat as well and this little small project was done just in a blink of an eye so once i got done with that project i immediately rolled into my rod storage solution so didn't really have anywhere great to put the rods i didn't want them to be in an upright holder because i do plan on fishing under docks so i need the rods to lay somewhere nice and uh, level and horizontal with the boat 
and not fly out. So I found these little holders on amazon.com, got them mounted with just a couple simple screws. And man, these things look really good and they do a really good job of holding my rods in place. So let's talk about the trolling motor on this boat. This is basically something that you get off of Amazon, these new port vessels, trolling motors. I don't know how long they're gonna last, but honestly, I didn't pay any money for it. I basically did a rod negotiation with one of my good buddies and this thing mounts perfectly on the front of the boat. So this is a motor that was purchased on Amazon. I have no clue how to even pronounce the name, but I can tell you it's a two-stroke, small six horsepower motor. It holds about a half a gallon of uh, mixed fuel and it puts the boat at about a top speed of 15 to 17 miles an hour, depending on how much stuff I have on this thing. And honestly, it's a great little motor for this boat. It's lightweight and it keeps with the theme of keeping the project cheap. All right, guys, well, that's my little shallow water John Skiff. Very excited to have this little boat in my arsenal. This was a super fun project to say the least. Uh, for just a couple bucks, I was able to bolt on quite a bit of stuff to it. Uh, to make sense for the style of fishing that I do. Now, this thing is going to perform very, very well in shallow water back creeks for redfish, trout, flounder, sheep's head, black drum. If it's there and I can throw something at it, it's going to be uh, coming home on, these, uh, on this little boat. So, Dad, thank you so much for allowing me to borrow this thing. I hope you don't mind the little upgrades that I've done to it. And for all of you guys at home, thank you so much for the support. Without the support of you guys, I wouldn't be able to do stuff like this and turn a new chapter in low country fishing. So that's all I got for today. I'll see you in the next video. Take care, everyone, and God bless.